Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay. Yep, there we go. So I don't know how this is going to go. Starting off with a new channel, new streaming channel. I don't know exactly how many people are going to be watching us live, but I wanted to stream here so I get going with this stream, and then it just matters that it's up. It's uploaded somewhere. So I don't know how many people are going to be here live, and that's okay. We don't have that many people because it's really that streaming. It's really I'm just like live streaming the process, streaming the process of recording the video for it. So it's like I'll probably edit this later and then re-upload it. But yeah, streaming, streaming. Nice, nice, nice. Feels good to settle into a new channel. I feel like um, this live stream is going to be a lot more intimate. AK says, I couldn't find episodes 5 through 10 with subs. I didn't want to join the channel they were on. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I just watched it on um, on Tencent, on the, on the Tencent YouTube channel. So, yeah. Someone says, I want my roommate to see this, but he hasn't read them yet. He's only watching so far. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so we're going to talk about um, episodes 5 through 10. Or really just talk about, like, the show in general and, like, where it's gone since the first few episodes because I feel like now it's we've gotten into some different territory with some things in the show so we'll get to that um and yeah I'll be right back And now I am back. So we will get to the review in just a little bit. So, um, yeah, so keep in mind, spoilers for the show. Uh, I'm still enjoying the show a lot. I think that there are some things, though, that I feel like are a little bit like, mm. So the main thing is, okay, I think that 30 episodes might be a little bit too much. I was very excited about having 30 episodes at first. But as I'm seeing like the show continue to go on and the pacing of the show, I feel like this might have been better with 24 episodes. Because now what I'm seeing like past episode four is uh, a lot of added characters, a lot of um, extending of characters that already exist, like Dasha, extended role. Um, we've got an extended role of like Zhu Bing Bing very extended role. She did basically nothing in, in the book. Um, and we also got like invented characters like Mu Zing, totally new. I'm um, just riding around on a scooter. I have no idea what's up with that character. I found like a lot of that stuff to be like rather like, I don't like not, not very interesting compared to what happens in the book. And I think this is because we're giving like a lot of the minor characters, um, I guess, I guess it probably has something to do with actors. I'm not sure how the contracts work, but I feel like it probably has something to do with the actors, actors having contracts that like they have to be in multiple episodes. Um, and they do that in American television shows when it comes to adaptations too. Like once you hire an actor, they have to be in a certain amount of episodes. You have to keep using them. But um, here, a lot of that feels like, I mean, it just feels like it really gives me a big filler vibe. And I don't like enjoy watching some of that stuff as much as the stuff that's like directly taken from the book. And also, um, a lot of things are out of order from the book, as far as I can tell. I know that this is the Chinese adaptation of the book. I know that there is the Chinese adaptation, so I feel like maybe this show is based more off of the Chinese version of the book because I hear certain things take place in different orders, and it remains to be seen if like everything is going to be included, but. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I did say in my last video that um, certain things with Ya Wenji might have been censored in the Chinese version of the book, but apparently that's not true. Apparently, like, the stuff with the, um, 
uh, the cultural revolution happens later in the book uh, versus the show. Um, we did get that to that in episode 10 just a little bit. But one thing I noticed is that what they're showing in episode 10 with Ye Wenji is actually like the second chapter of the Red Coast thing in the book. It's the second time you see her young. Like the first time you see her is in a different circumstance. And I'm very interested if they're going to show that first time that we encounter Ye Wenji in the show. But we'll see if they do that. Um, so yeah, uh, what else? What else? Um, so yeah, I think because it's 30 episodes, because it's so extended, um, I think that's the reason there's so much reiterating and there's so many like that. That's the reason that there's so much redundancy that I see happening and so many like dragging episodes because um, they'll spend a lot of time just kind of recapping things that we already know about that we've like, and they're saying it over and over again, Yang Dong committed suicide because of this. And I'm like, you're just like discussing stuff that we already know. And it really makes it drag for me. I don't know if they're reiterating it just because like, they don't think people are gonna understand it. I don't know. That's a little, for me, weird. Um, Death Mullet says, I like the changes. I don't know. I mean, I can't find any change. I don't. I don't like any of the changes, I have to say. I mean, the changes don't make the story better. It's not that I'm like actively disliking everything that's changed, but I don't think all the changes make the story better. Like for instance, there's a lot more Dasha. Dasha enters the game with him in the show version and he does, doesn't do anything. He's just there. I mean, the scene isn't really different. It's just Dasha is there. And then there's the weird part of the show where like inside of the game wang runs to rescue rescue dasha and i'm like why are you trying to rescue him you're in a you're in a game you're playing a game like to me that was just like weird it's like you're just inserting dasha into the scene for whatever reason and i feel like dasha and uh his assistant zu bing bing are just kind of inserted into a lot of scenes where it's just like mm, can we just move on to the actual interesting parts of the story like, I felt like it took a way too long to get to the Yao Wenji flashback. Like, episode 10, I feel like should have maybe been around episode 7 or 6, honestly. I feel like we could have cut a lot of stuff and got to episode 10 a lot faster. I thought the game sequences were actually pretty interesting because that's such an interesting and, like, weird, trippy part of the book where you're just trying to understand what's going on. So I think the game parts are pretty cool. Um, it has a lot of mystery. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about just like some of the character extensions. That's a little weird for me. Um, and so I want to say that I did like watch a couple, just watch a little bit of some Chinese dramas just to get like a sense of what it's like. Um, what what Chinese shows are like. And I definitely feel like the Free Writer Problem Show has a little bit of that Chinese drama feel where like certain things are just like a little bit melodramatic um certain things are just like a little bit like tonally like weird sometimes it's like a little goofy sometimes and i definitely think that is a little bit strange to me as an american american seeing like it's it's like very serious and then they'll cut to something that's kind of like a little bit goofy and weird and i'm just like oh that's a little weird um so that was a little bit like uh, something that threw me off. I definitely think that the Netflix version will be a lot more dreary compared to uh, this show. A lot more just like dark, consistently dark. Because I feel like the tone of this show like changes a little bit. For sure. Someone, um, a Logos says, has anybody noticed how good the outro song is like? when you really read the lyrics that's <laughs> it's a pretty good song i i it's weird because i can tell like a lot of the songs that they're using they, they seem like original songs um but the, some of them have the lyrics translated to english and they're being sung in english and it, it's a little bit weird because it's like it doesn't rhyme and um they're not really grammatically correct it's like i seen the future your people won't believe <laughs> and it's like okay <laughs> it's a little weird i kind of wish that like, uh, just just saying it in, in in mandarin chinese you know probably be better 
but yeah. Uh, most of the music is pretty good though. Pretty dark, pitch bendy type sounds. Yeah, but like I said, um, okay. So far, so far, um, I think that uh, yeah. Someone says both tracks, intro and out tracks, stay in my mind. I quite like them. They're <laughs> pretty catchy. I was gonna say okay. So yeah, I think my highlights of the show so far, um, as far as episode five through ten, are the game scene. I really enjoyed the whole sequence of the game. Um, and seeing the dehydration, I thought was really cool. Um, because I always wondered, like reading the book, you only have your own imagination to try and like make this landscape come to life. So it's cool to finally have a visualization of what it potentially was like. Um, so that's very, very interesting to see the pyramids and the pendulums, um, and the dehydration process. But like, like I said, I can't only imagine what it's like for people that have not read the book to watch this show. I feel like this is not, this is not a show that's for people that haven't read the book because how are you going to catch up with it? And there's a lot of things that are weirdly, weirdly different. And someone just mentioned Will Buck, Dasha strapping the bomb to his chest. That isn't in the book. <laughs> that is not in the book at all. I don't know what that scene was supposed to mean. Or I don't know if Wang was supposed to find that endearing. To me, that was a very weird thing. And to me, like the weirdest things in the show are not in the book at all. Um, there was a very weird sequence <laughs> in the show where Wang is in his daughter's classroom and all the kids just clap for like five minutes straight at his speech. And these are like little kids, like elementary school children. And I remember just watching it like, what? <laughs> I have no idea what that was supposed to be about. That was super strange and not in the book. So a lot of the little weird things that I'm just like, ah, I don't know if that should be there. It's pretty much all coming from like just additional things that have been added. Not sure what's up with that. I'm not sure if like, I don't know. I haven't watched enough Chinese shows to like have a basis of comparison. I haven't watched another, enough Chinese adaptations of science fiction things to have a basis of comparison and know if like other things like do similar types of, you know, little things that don't match tonally with what I'm used to. You know what I mean? It just seemed like super out of place. Someone says the game looks pretty much like what I imagined. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is cool seeing it visualized for sure. And it does look pretty much like what I imagined. Um, they definitely kind of captured the dreamlike state of it, I think, where it's like, ah, oh, this is really like weird, and uh, I don't know, I don't know. It, it was very cool, but then again, for me, again, it was kind of I was kind of weirded out by the fact that Dash Dasha is there for no reason, and it's just very, very strange to me. In general, I enjoy watching. I have enjoyed watching the show so far. We, we've been watching it every night. I think they skipped one night. I think they skipped Saturday. But I've been enjoying the show. I've been enjoying the show in general, for sure. It's a nice treat. Um, except, I mean, there was at least one episode where I felt like kind of dragged a little bit too much. It might have been episode six, maybe, or maybe it was like episode nine. There's been a couple episodes where I felt like almost could have been cut down either a lot or like cut entirely because they just really dragged. And it was like kind of just reiterating a lot of stuff, like I said. But yeah. Um, so far, we've been really building um, the mystery and the tension surrounding the frontiers of science and ETO. You got Dasha and you got Zhu Bing Bing trying to figure out what's going on. I'm not really sure what the role of the reporter character that wasn't in the book, Mu Zing, is with trying to figure out what's going on with the frontiers of science and what. I'm not really sure what her role is going to be ultimately. Um, I don't know if it's coming from the fact that I already know what's going on <laughs> or if it's just like, I, or if it's really is just super meandering, but I feel like I, I already know what the deal is. So it's like seeing them meander about it, especially with all the additional like screen time giving to minor characters, just to me is it's definitely the least interesting parts of the show. I feel like there's some really rough stuff. And I feel like just now in episode 10, are we getting to like the stuff that's the most interesting about the book, right? 
So if you haven't watched the show yet, if you can just get to episode 10, I, I think the um, the the game episodes are good. But if you can just get to episode 10, I feel like that's when it really picks up. I haven't seen episode 11 yet. It's not out until tomorrow. But I feel like episode 10 is really where um, the game kind of picks up. Well, the, where the show kind of picks up. Because I enjoy seeing the, yeah, Wenji flashback. And that could just be me subconsciously, too, knowing where that all leads. So maybe that's why I like um, that part better. That's that um, episode better than what I've seen so far with episodes five through nine. But it remains to be seen. Um, so far, I think, even with the added content, the show is pretty close to the book. It's relatively close to the book. Um, like I said, apparently, according to um, some of my Chinese followers, it's more similar to the Chinese version of the book than it is the American version of the book, which makes sense because the American version of the book is the adaptation. It's translated. Um, so it makes sense that some things are... Uh, mixed around. But um, so far with the show, I don't think that really much of anything is being left out. Some things are being augmented. Lots of things are being added. I don't think anything is being left out. For instance, on things that are being added, I think the show is really taking its time to show you how the Frontiers of Science works with ETO to take down scientists that are doing important work or work that's going to lead to the development of something important. I feel like uh, the show is showing you that more so than the book is. And I think that's just so that people will understand that when we get to the bigger reveals later on. So I think people, it's so that people understand what exactly the function of ETO is and how exactly they are involved with the scientist suicides. Because I don't think that it's just like, oh, they tell them that they're Turkish scientists and that makes them insane. It's like how we're seeing with Wang, uh, where they're, doing things to like affect them physically you know they're projecting lights onto their eyes um and we also see that with another character who's having the lights projected upon his eyes and he almost dies um because can you imagine if you're seeing something in your field of vision and it doesn't make any sense and everyone's telling you that it's not there <laughs> that might drive you insane at some point you might just want it to stop what i think is very interesting about wayne wang as a character too is that he's kind of just dealing with it you know what i mean wang is just kind of um He's kind of like just grin and bearing it. He's like, okay, I'm not stopping my research. I'll deal with the numbers on my face. And I think that's admirable of Wang, I guess. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. There was also um, a weird dance sequence <laughs> with Dasha in one of the episodes that I'm just like, why is, I think that was in, might have been near the scene or the same scene where he has the bomb on his chest, which wasn't in the book. And then there's a weird dance sequence that was in the book. I don't know what that was about, but <laughs> cool. I'm just, I'm just trying to think from memory um, all the things about the show that I liked and the things that I thought were weird. I said in the first review that um, the show was good, but it definitely takes some use to getting to some of the things that are different about it um, versus American shows. Like when, when it comes to American TV shows and American productions, we're used to very, we're used to, a certain type of thing and this is definitely different um sometimes it's weirdly slow and sometimes it's weirdly just like silly you know um so it's definitely an adjustment uh to get used to watching this you know and i don't think that this is a show for everybody i don't think this is really a show for the average american i think the average american would definitely get pretty bored and frustrated with this show pretty quickly um because of just how like gradual it all is and how like every episode isn't really like a big moment it's kind of like just all kind of continual and there's a lot like I, like I said a lot of reiteration with not that much payoff every episode so I think a lot of people might just get frustrated bored and tired and I think a lot of people are going to turn I think a lot of people a lot of Americans would probably not watch past the first three episodes of this show <laughs> someone says that dance is kind of a meme in china <laughs> that's insane <laughs> yeah that dance is kind of a mean meme in china interesting i didn't know that someone says episode 11 is out right now excellent oh yeah you're right because i did episode 10 yesterday so we're gonna watch episode 11 tonight and then we'll come back here like 
next week, later this week, one of these days, and, and stream episode, stream about episode 11 through however many I watch up until that point. Ugh. Someone says, uh, Romina Jones says, I'm preferring this to American style shows. American shows move too quick. Here we sink into a scene and the atmosphere builds up. Um, I, it's, it's definitely a, an adjustment to get used to. Um, and I, I don't mind watching something that's more slow, a little bit more cerebral, more like just like a lot of characters talking. I don't mind watching that. But I do think that the average American is not going to get into this show and like it very much, I will say. Um, unless you're really into the three-body problem like I am. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, but this show is also not made for Americans. It's made for a Chinese audience. Like, we're getting an American version of this. I tried to get my roommates to sit down and watch an episode, but they got bored after an episode and a half. Yeah, I, I totally believe it because it's a... I totally believe it. Let me close the window. Neighbor's dogs are barking. Pay no attention to the fact that I'm wearing it. Ah, it's so loud. Okay. I was going to say pay no attention to the fact that I'm wearing sweatpants with a blazer, but I don't even think you can see that. So, <laughs> Anyway. Quinn, do you think the Netflix series will have some chance to be good as this one? I think the Netflix series is going to have to be very different. I don't know how many episodes they're going to get. Um, it could potentially be good, but it's going to be really different. You know what I mean? Things are going to have to be changed and um, adapted more heavily, I think, than in this one. Um, just to make things move a little bit better for like a 10 episode format. Unless they give book one more than 10 episodes, which I really can't. I really can't see them giving book one more than 10 episodes for Netflix because I feel like, like I said, when it comes to an American audience, getting people to stay um, and continue to watch something, you need every episode to be like, like a whole like moment. You need every, 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 you need every episode to be a moment and you need to end the series on a big bang. And so I think the ending of the three body problem where we have this big reveal as to what's really going on I think if we don't get that in season one of the American show, there's almost no chance that, that show will get another season. I feel like Americans like, at this point are not okay with like watching 10 episodes of something and then not having like the big moment where they know what's going on. And they like, we, we need the moment to get them excited, excited for the next season. Cause I don't think if you ended halfway through book one, that Americans are going to be excited for the next half of it, in my opinion. <laughs> Stone says, I love your work, man. Can you please do a review of All Tomorrows? I think it had some cosmic horror elements. I have heard of All Tomorrows. I'm pretty sure Alt Shift X has a big video on All Tomorrows. Um, I have not read any of that. Um, people have recommended it to me, but uh, I just haven't yet. So maybe if I read and I get into it, and that might be something that we'll do. All right. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, I, I don't know what link you guys, I don't know how people watching this got to this stream, but I posted this link in several different places. But this is my new streaming channel. I'm gonna be streaming on this channel um, pretty much from now on. We'll, we won't be screaming on Quinn's ideas very much, just this channel. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is just because I wanna stream about more different types of things and stream more often. And it's just, I think, better to have the streams on a different channel. So um, I didn't know how many people were going to be watching this stream, how many people were going to show up to this because it's a new channel. But we've got some people here. And just make sure you hit the like button because that also helps always on any channel. And yeah, 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 yeah. So I also put up a little poll here that you guys can vote on. Do you like the show? Yes, no, it's okay. I haven't seen it. It looks like 78% of people saying yeah. 78% of people said yeah. So awesome. <laughs> That is really awesome. Did you read Children of Memory? I don't think Children of Memory is out here yet. Is it? It might be, but I don't think it is. So I have not read Children of Memory. And that is the third book in Adrian Tchaikovsky's awesome science fiction series. Now that starts with Children of Time, Children of Ruin, and Children of Memory. But yeah. Someone says it is. So Children of Memory is out. Interesting. So yeah. 
Um, someone says the cinematography is a little odd at times. I have to say, yeah, but I kind of, I kind of give them a break for you know this kind of TV show that's thirty episodes. I don't know how true this is, but I heard that like perhaps this is a rumor that one episode of the Netflix version is the same cost to make as like 20 episodes of this show. Just one episode of the Netflix version is like 20 episodes of this one. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so I give them a little bit, I give them a little bit of break on the cin cinematography sometimes because they have so much to do. You know, they've got so much to get done with this. Someone says, I've never read the book. I only have your videos as a reference, but I love this show. That's awesome. Typically, what's curious about my videos is that I never really talk about, I don't talk about the first book on my videos as much. Usually in my videos, I'm talking about what's what's happening in Death, Death's End and um, The Dark Forest, because I feel like those are the two books where things really, really get interesting. This first book is just the introduction. Um, the first book is just the introduction. So, yeah. And I feel like this show um <laughs> this show, i feel like people watching the show now even if you've seen all 10 episodes and you haven't read the books you don't really know where this is going at all like i feel like this show so far is surrounding eto you don't really i actually um you did have dasha say wonder if shan shan yifan was an alien that was interesting that was interesting that's not i don't think i don't think that's in the book i don't think he says that in the show it's like oh is she an alien um and they do keep mentioning the farmer so they're kind of implying that alien things are happening but generally the show seems to be really focusing on like i said earlier um what's to deal with eto what's to deal with the scientist suicides and what's to deal with this like weird game and who made this game and what's going on with physics so it's it's not like what the point of the series is ultimately it's like really grounded at this point it's a really really grounded on earth at this point and those of you that read the read the books know that it really really takes off and expands as it goes on someone says it's impressive how well acted and well written the show is each episode doesn't usually have more than a couple of different settings and a lot of recurrent sets which i imagine helps with the production costs that's definitely true i'll be curious to see what the next season is going to be like you know the dark forest book It'll be really interesting to see um, because they, they definitely have to have more CGI in the Dark Forest and more like weirder and interesting looking sets in the Dark Forest. So if they do get to that, it'll be curious to see what it's like. And I do agree that the acting is pretty consistent and solid. There's a little bit of woodiness from some of the actors, but I feel like the acting is pretty consistent. Um, yeah, so definitely mad respect on the acting for sure. Someone says... This may be an odd question, but what is your favorite genre of liter literature? Um, do you love to write? Also enjoying and loving your new channel, my dude. Um, okay, I'm just gonna answer this in two ways because I'm not sure which exactly what you mean. I do, I my favorite genre right now, it switches all the time. I feel like um, if you asked me like five years ago, I would have said fantasy, but right now it's definitely science fiction. I love reading science fiction. And as far as to write, fantasy science fiction i just the the feeling of uh crafting my own world and making the own my own rules to how that world works i think is very compelling to me so yeah so somewhat philip costello says i'm going to watch the show once i start my three body problem reread i'm going to read each part as the show covers it the main actors are all, okay excellent excellent i think that's a good idea uh james is also reading the book right now as we're watching the show and he's getting like a lot out of that. It's really great because because he's reading it, he remember he can compare it actively to what's happening in the show right now. So I'm, I'm like, did this happen? I don't remember this. And he's like, no, that didn't happen. This happened. That that happened differently. But yeah, I feel like uh, the changes, like I said, are are minimal. It's more like they're adding stuff than removing stuff, which I I, I prefer adding stuff than removing stuff. Have they announced that they're going to do a Dark Forest show, show, says Death Mullet? They have not announced it, but it's really just my assumption. Um, the Three Body Problem series is very popular in China, as far as I can tell. I went over on Billy Billy, which is basically like Chinese YouTube. And Three Body Problem videos get 
millions of views over there. So that's um, really interesting. And also, um, I found out the other day that actually a lot of my videos have been uploaded to Billy Billy, and they've been uploaded for years. Um, Hyperion videos, Dune videos, like almost all of my three body problem videos, and they get mega, mega views. Um, my live stream, the last live stream I did on the three body was uploaded multiple times. It's got like over 200,000 views, like almost 300,000 views between all the uploads. And like the version of it on YouTube has less than 50,000 views, the one that I uploaded. So it's really insane to see that blow up on like in another country more so than it did in the United States. It's really weird. Okay, let's see. Someone says, hi, Quinn, do you know about the Billy Billy animated adaptation of the second book, The Dark Forest? It's critically panned in China, but has some interesting visuals. I actually avoided watching it because I heard how bad it was from some of my Chinese friends just saying, don't bother with it. It's really terrible. They kind of just throw everything in the book out. So because of that, um, I kind of don't really want to sit through it. Um, I'm sure there's some interesting visuals, but if it's really that disrespectful to the source material that I'm not really interested, you know, because The Dark Forest is my favorite book in the series. Um, I feel like The Dark Forest is where the series really, really takes off and gets really, really good. This is like the height of Shishin Lu. I feel like this is what science fiction was made for. The genre of science fiction was created for books like this. And I'm just not okay with like sitting through like a show that's like taking a crap on it. You know what I mean? I could totally watch uh, The Three Body Problem because it's respectful to the source material, though it's like different. And I'm sure like the creators are, are making changes. I'm sure it's the, nece the necessity of it being thir 30 episodes, right? Because you, you have to make changes to get it to fit in a certain time frame. So I get it, but yeah. Someone says, Luigi is a Formula One driver champion in the adaptation. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but okay. Um, Death Mullet says, that makes me really curious what the Billy Billy show does different. Maybe I'll take a peek at the Billy Billy show. And then the next time we stream on this channel here, by the way, if you're watching, subscribe. This is the streaming channel now. Um, yeah, um, maybe I'll watch it and talk about it. Maybe I'll watch a little bit of it and talk about it because and maybe I'll just end up <laughs> crapping on it. Yeah. So let's see. Um, do you think some of the scenes from the Dark Forest can really be done well on screens considering the scope of some of the scenes and the budget they are working with? Um, I don't know. I, it depends on how much money they have. It depends on how much money they have. Because in the Dark Forest, um, we're, we're, we're seeing the future of humanity. And there's a lot of like outer space stuff and, 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 and ship and spaceship stuff and cryo sleep. And there's a lot of time that passes by. And there's, there's a lot more variance in the scenes. Like I, the three body problem takes place over the course of a few months. Whereas the dark forest takes place over the course of a hundreds, well, not, well, yeah, hundreds of years in the dark forest, whereas the three writer problem is months. So it's, it's a whole different thing. And, um, I will just have to see what they're working with. We'll just have to see what they're working with. Let's see. Oh, my eye. I've been staring at a screen for way too long. My eyes. My eye gets super twitchy sometimes when I'm just like staring at the screen. Um, they didn't show yeah, Wendy's, um, how yeah, Wendy's dad really died, which is the catalyst for the entire plot. Yeah, we got a tiny glimpse at yeah, Wendy's dad laying in a bed, but we have not seen the death moment. And I don't know if that's going to happen later. I've been told by, my, by people that have read the Chinese adaptation that it does happen, but later in the book, whereas like in the American adaptation, it's like the first chapter. So it still remains to be seen whether they're where, whether they're going to show that. And I actually heard that I actually heard from also a Chinese follower of mine that um, some people in China are a little shocked that they even showed what they showed in episode ten. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, 
because of the political climate, apparently. I don't know that much about it because I don't really know that much about Chinese history and Chinese politics, but apparently that's kind of a touchy subject um, over, overseas. Um, someone says, I can't be the only one who is hypnotized by the light in the background with all the moving lights like that. Yeah, right? That's a cool light, isn't it? Um, that's the same light that I use in a bunch of my videos. Yeah, that's my dog. Dang, she is really lumped over. Say hi. Can you guys see? There she is. She's super lumped over. I don't know why she's so tired all the time. She doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything but lay on blankets. Do anything but lay on blankets and complain. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. Someone says, how about the 4D stuff in Death's End? Um, yeah, we've talked about that multiple times on the channel. It gets really weird and trippy. Um, that's the part in the book. Once I got to Death's End, one thing that I was really surprised about in Death's End, but the thing that I loved reading it is how it just kept going, right? At some point you think like, how far are you going to take this, Shishinla? Like, how far are you going to keep taking this story about humanity? Because it's a story about humans continuing to like move forward. And it's like, this could go on indefinitely. And it really just like keeps moving it, keeps going for, for further. And that's what I love about it because it's a great piece of speculative fiction. And I think one pe one thing that people get hung up on with this series for some reason is that they'll be like, oh, well, this, this is so scientifically improbable. This could never happen. Like this, the science is wrong in this. And I'm just like, guys, science fiction. <laughs> it's science fiction. We got to emphasize the fiction part. Like we don't watch Star Trek and then talk about like how, I don't know, the transporter could never work or how the hollow deck could never work. It's about the speculation of it. It's about, it's the what if question. That is the point of science. That's the fiction element. We take science and then we say, well, what if it could be like this? What if it actually went down like this and we could do this and we could make this happen? It's not about what's 100% scientifically accurate all the time. I think, well, some science books are like that. There's definitely some science fiction books that are trying to be like 100% scientifically accurate with the what ifs, but that doesn't work all the time. Sometimes that's just plain boring. Sometimes we got to have a little bit of make-believe science fiction. And I think that's totally fine. And I think that's awesome and exciting. You know, it doesn't have to be always 100% logical or 100% scientifically consistent. Because lots of things that we love. And I feel, honestly, most of the science fiction things that we love, it's most of it's impossible, you know? <laughs> most of it's impossible. Like, Star Trek could never happen. Not the way that it happens in Star Trek. Um, and that's true for most science fiction things. So, yeah. So um, Jing Sung Yang says, to film Dark Forest would cost a lot of money. If the season does well, there will be more investors and you can expect the new season will drag on even longer for more ads. It's been really curious seeing uh, all the Chinese ads. Um, I definitely prefer Chinese ads to American ads. I find American advertisement to be just so grating and annoying. Um, but Chinese ads are super quick. They show them and then they go. And I much prefer that to just like the drawn out American ads that are just like trying to manipulate you emotionally. <laughs> like It's just like, can you stop? Can you just show me the product and move on? Yeah, so I much prefer the Chinese ads. Um, Jonah Hekmetar says, episode 11 seems to have lost, the, um, have lost 10 minutes somewhere. Um, it did feel like there was some missing scene. Interesting. Okay, I haven't watched episode 11 yet, but we'll see. We'll see. Because it's it's definitely possible that some things that were maybe even in the original version of the show were cut. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to judge it before I see. So House of the Everlasting Shadow says, hey, Quinn, I just wanted to say you're my favorite YouTuber and I really appreciate what you do. Thank you so much. It's, it's so nice. So nice. Also, you know what's really nice? Um, I said that um, 
I was looking at my videos on Billy Billy. I had no idea that I had this whole other audience on Billy Billy. But the comments on Billy Billy are so sincere and nice. And I think it's really, really great. Um, I don't know that everyone's just so friendly. Everyone's just like, oh, I, I, I love this content creator. Um, and I'm just like, oh, that's super, super nice. Um, and also I saw someone that said my pronunciation was really good, which is so funny to me because like uh, Americans for some reason always want to correct me on the Chinese names. <laughs> Americans are like, you're saying it wrong. It's pronounced like this and you better get these names right because you're saying people's names wrong and you're going to offend people. And, and the Chinese are just like, we don't care. Great pronunciation because it's like they understand that I don't speak Chinese. So it's like, I'm going to say a Chinese name with a Chinese with, with an American accent. So it's just obviously, right? Uh, but to me, that was a really funny, funny difference. <laughs> um, and I think that I think that I think it's hilarious, really, really hilarious. Because I try to be as accurate as possible with the names, but you know, not none of us going to be able to get it. And people say my name wrong all the time. You know, my full name is Quindarius. Right. And that sounds pretty easy to say Quindarius. Right. You have no idea how many teachers, college professors, random people in my life just for the love of me can't pronounce it. <laughs> Quindarius, Quind just any variation on it. It's so weird. Super weird. So I never, never, I'm never like hard on people when they can't get, get a name right because I'm not good with it. Lots of people aren't. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, someone says, Chug says, regarding the accuracy of the adaptation, how do you feel how do you feel now versus how you did the first four episodes? Okay. I definitely feel like my um opinion on it has has shifted slightly. I think I was much more invested in the first four episodes, but as it has gone, the dragging bits of the show, I feel like definitely slow it down for me. Like um, I feel like it's definitely dragging on a little bit longer. And I did hear Big rumor, I don't know if this is true. I did hear that um, the original creators wanted 24 episodes or so. And that um, the network, Tencent or whatever, ordered 30 episodes. So it seems that perhaps additional content had to be added that was more filler because of you know them needing six more episodes. And I think the original cut, the original script was probably a lot more concise. Oh, everyone's saying episode 11 is slow. Yeah. So I'm feeling like the original script was probably a lot more concise, which makes sense to me because I was saying earlier that it just like, if this was like 20 episodes, I feel like it would be, oh yeah, this is a banger. This is a banger. But because there's 30, it's much, much slower than I think should be. And it's almost like I wish I someone could do a cut of this that's more concise. Someone can do a cut of it that's more concise. Um, because I feel like, I feel a little bit bad almost for the show creators um, if it's true that they had to add in more episodes because it's like, I know a lot of people, a lot of Americans have stopped watching already and they'll never watch anymore because of how slow that some episodes are. And that's just kind of the sad truth. It's kind of the sad truth. Eric Jeanette says, did I just do your name wrong too? Eric Jeanette says, I feel your pain. Few people get my last name right. Is it Jeanette or Janae? Like, tell me, is it? Because I feel like I just got it wrong too. True Harm, our, True Harm says, are really cool stuff they chose not to include so far? Not that I can, not that I can tell. I feel like they haven't really cut anything which is why I'm still giving the show a pass for being a little bit slow in some parts. As long as they don't cut anything, as long as they don't put anything on the chopping block, I'm fine with the added things. I can sit through the added things. <laughs> okay, uh, Maya says, hi, Quinn. I showed some of my Chinese friends your video um, on Billy Billy because I believe you make the best science fiction videos on the internet. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Although, are there many videos about the three-bedded problem in China? They lack the depth and creative. Okay. He says, although there are many videos about three-bedded problem in China, they lack the depth and creativity shown in your videos. That's very nice of you to say. Thank you so much. 
someone says, whoa, just got on. Um, we need a hat. Come out. Well, I need a haircut. You know, I, I should have gotten my haircut before I did this stream, but you know, we're just dealing with it today. We're dealing with it today. <laughs> uh, Eric Jeanette says people usually emphasize the wrong syllable. Hmm, interesting interesting. Uh Skuka. Skuma much says in my country, novel adaptations were stretched to like a hundred episodes. This is not new to me. What country are you from? Interesting. Yeah. Death Mullet says the universe flickering was underwhelming. Well, I feel like some of it come boils down to a difference of how you see stuff in your head and then how it's portrayed on screen. Because like some things in your mind can be really, really terrifying. Like in the book, when you when when the build up to the universe flickering part, and when you finally see it, it's definitely really really spooky and really scary. Uh, but sometimes, like it doesn't translate necessarily as well, and sometimes that just happens like that. And it seems like they're extending uh, the one character to the the character that's at the satellite. I don't know if he is. Uh, really famous in China, maybe, but he was also in one of the advertisements uh, during the middle of the show. He was also in one of the advertisements. Professor E says, sucks you aren't making any money off of that site. They stole your content. Well, yeah, technically, but I'm not, is it, I'm not, I'm not sure what the legality of it, is it even possible for me as an American to make money off of Billy Billy being a Chinese site? I, I tried to look into it, but there's a whole verification process where they have to verify my ID and it's the whole thing is in Chinese. And even when you translate it, it's really hard. It's a lot of weird things going on. So I'm not really sure how to <clears throat> begin the process of even uploading my content to Billy Billy, even if I want it to. <clears throat> um, maybe like there's a someone that speaks Chinese um, that can help me out a little bit with it because I just don't really know what I'm doing. Um, and I don't really look at it like they stole my content. I feel like, you know, I'm not like stressing about it. It's just like, I'm just happy that I have a whole entire other, I'm happy that my content can be viewed by a whole other group of people. You know what I mean? Um, I don't really say, yeah. I mean, it technically stolen, but it is what it is. At least they translated it. I would love someone, I would love to have someone to translate my videos in the Chinese. I need to find someone that can do subtitles so that I can get my videos translated in Chinese. And then optimally, I want to start like maybe Quinn's ideas in Billy Billy and just uploading my videos to YouTube and to Billy Billy at the same time with Chinese subtitles. That'd be great if I could ultimately get to that point in time. But as far as I'm concerned, um, these video uploads of mine have been happening for years. Um, so it's, I can't really complain about it now. Um, Maya says, Mia says, Billy Billy ad revenue is much less than YouTube, but posting them on Billy Billy with Chinese sub is a good, is good exposure. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think we'll ultimately end up doing that. Um, yeah. Someone says, can't you just take them right off Billy Billy? I didn't upload them. So I don't really, I can't really take them off. I don't know if I, I don't, I don't really, I don't really want to. I don't really go in like, because some of these have hundreds of thousands of views, right? And I'm just kind of happy that people have that content there to watch. You know what I mean? So I don't want to get it taken down. Um, but I would like to have my own Billy Billy channel that's official, that all of that content could go to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly, little finger. Because who knows how many Chinese followers that I've gotten from those Billy Billy videos being uploaded. And also, it's not just me. Like when I was scrolling around, I saw content from Daniel Green. I saw um, Hello Future Me. There's lots of American YouTubers that get put on Billy Billy. So someone says, hey, I'm waiting for a modern novel to tie into the Hawaii telescopes as I'm born and raised on the big island. By the way, handsome without the hat, but <laughs> the mystique, <laughs> the mystique of the hat. <laughs> um, Philip Costello says Daniel Green stopped reading after book one to each his own. I don't know if Daniel Green's as big of a sci-fi guy as I am. Yeah, so yeah, to each his own. To each his own. So what else about um, Third Body Problem episodes five through 10 can we talk about? Um, 
I just remember saying during episode 10, man, I really wish that we could have gotten to this sooner. Because like once we got to episode 10 and she got to reading Silent Spring, I'm like, oh yeah, this is the good stuff. And they start looking up at the radio tower. Oh, that this should have been like episode five or episode six. Or, you know, it should have been a lot earlier on. But I'm happy we got to it because I found it very interesting. And this part in the book is also very interesting. I don't know if you guys know about Silent Spring and what the whole deal with that was. But I, we learned about this in, I think, middle school, elementary school or something, in environmental science. And it had to do with pesticides. Um, so they were just trying to get rid of <clears throat> the insects that were attacking crops and ruining crops. But the chemicals that they were using stayed in the environment. And it, it, it would, I forget exactly what it would do, but I think it would like kill all the bugs. And then the animals eating the bugs would have food. So they would die off. And then the animals that ate the bigger animals started to die off. So the point of the book was that eventually, if we keep using these types of pesticides that are killing off the environment, we're going to go, it's just going to be silent spring. Imagine like a, a watering hole, like a, a, a spring of animals full of life, buzzing with life. You got, you got birds and you got frogs and you got insects. Imagine now that there's nothing. Silent spring. So basically because of this book, um, certain types of pesticides were banned so that that essentially didn't happen because we were like literally about to destroy the environment. And so that's really, really interesting. Um, it's a really interesting read too. Um, so this part in uh, Three Body, yeah, Wenji becoming obsessed with it, I think, oh, it's so interesting and it makes so much sense because it's just about like the recklessness of kind of just humans. If you leave, people will talk about like, oh, regulation, we don't need all this regulation. But if you don't have regula regulations, people will build houses without nails and then sell it to a family. We need the regulations because people will destroy the world. <laughs> people will absolutely destroy the world for a profit. So, yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of like when, when you think about yeah, Wenji and her whole sentiment, sentiment it's like hum humans aren't that great. You know, it's kind of like you can almost see where yeah, Wenji is coming from ultimately because it's like humans are not that great and we kind of mess stuff up all the time and it, it kind of sucks. <laughs> kind of sucks. Um, so yeah, I really, I really liked episode 10 a lot just because I was very happy to see something different than just Dasha and Zhe Bing Bing and Wang sitting in a room reiterating what we've already heard like the last three episodes again. You know what I mean? Have you noticed that all that the whole female cast is extremely attractive, a little unrealistic? I have 100 percent noticed that. Um, there's a lot of variance. In the choice of male actors, I noticed, but the female, the female actresses, um, are all very pretty. Um, I'll have a, I'll have a similar look, and that's a little bit, it's a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie. Um, typically, uh, in America, especially nowadays, diversity is a big thing. So we're like different looks of people like different um weights of people just like just a bunch of different looks not just like racially speaking but there's just like a lot of variance in looks and here it, it, it definitely does seem like there's like one look that they want for the women and then the guys can just look a bunch of different ways you got dasha doesn't look anything like wang and then you got the guy that was at the telescope you got the military guy looks totally different and then you got ding yi has his own different look so it's like, I don't know, that is a little bit like, I, I definitely did notice that. <laughs> I definitely did notice that. Um, uh, someone says, yeah, Wenji is, is George Carlin if he chilled out. You mean if he chilled out? So George Carlin would have been even more extra. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so like I said earlier, um, if you have not seen episode five through 10 yet, just get to episode 10, I feel like. I think, I think you'll enjoy the game episodes for sure. The game episodes are really weird and interesting. And it's like, what the hell is even happening? And these are so weird and trippy. Um, and then episode 10, I feel like, is when we finally start to get to the place for me where the book like really took off, right? It was, it was like, once we got to the Red Coast chapters, it was like, oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Um, and they're already foreshadowing 
they're already foreshadowing it in the show. Well, they really have been the whole time, but we really got the first like eerie glance up towards the radio tower. Um, and um, it's really cool because I like this part in the book so much because I don't know, I, I love the trope of being in like a small town and then there's like a science lab. And because of the experiments at the science lab, um, weird things are happening in the town, like with the rain and like all the weird things. I really like that trope. And so on this episode, we get we get the first hint of that. And we get the first like glancing up at the radio tower where yeah, Wenji will ultimately be. Um, so that was really cool. And I, I really liked the vibe of episode 10 and the change of scenery. Finally, the change of scenery. Um, Cause it's just, it gets a little bit like, dragging seeing the same sets over and over again and i get that that's helping them that's helping them um cut you know cut budget but you know it's it's a little weird to see the same thing over and over again. anyway someone says ak says i'm not seeing the donate button um this channel is not monetized right now but if you want to support quinn's ideas quinn streams you can check out the patreon link in the description I mean, you could also check out the PayPal link if you want it, if you want to support the channel. But you know, no, no worries about that. This is a more chill stream. <clears throat> it's cool that we got. Um, I actually like the amount of people that we have here right now, because watching on whenever 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 we're streaming on Quinn's ideas, I have ADHD. So like focusing for me, I can I I have to hyper focus on like things. If I'm talking, I can't read the chat, right? If I'm like looking at something, I can't read the chat and I can barely talk. So with less people being here, it's like I can see everybody's comments. I can get everybody's com comments in the chat and I can still talk. And I really like not having the chat rushing all the time because it's like, ah, I'm missing everything. So, yeah. <clears throat> Someone says, interesting that Asimov made it to China. Just something you never think about. He was the most pro pro prolific writer of the 20th century. Well, of course, Asimov made it to China. Um, you can tell that Trishan Luzik is is um, inspired by tons of American authors and American sci-fi. Um, there's Star Trek references in Death's End. Uh, there's a ship called the Enterprise. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. I feel like when something is that famous, everyone, people all around the world are gonna read it. People all around the world world read science fiction. People all around the world read like um, A Song of Ice and Fire, Harry Potter, like those major series, like there's everywhere. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. What's What I'm uh, very curious to see in the future is how the three body problem will take off in America. It's already pretty popular in America, uh, but I'm curious to see after the David and Dan show, after the Netflix show, how much it's gonna really expand in popularity and you know, honestly, I'm not I'm not rooting against David and Dan. Um, I was angry with them for a long time for what they did to the ending of Game of Thrones, for what they did to Game of Thrones. But you know, ultimately, I want the Three Body Problem American adaptation to be really, really good because I feel like I think I want more people to read this series because I really like it and I think it's very interesting. It has it's a it's a new it's it's, it's a new science fiction classic. I feel like. <laughs> Wait, Quinn, which is your favorite book in the series? As I said a little bit earlier in the stream, my favorite, 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 favorite book in the series is The Dark Forest. I just think it's, I think it's the best one. It's got, to me, the best climax. It's got, like, it's the point where it's like, okay, we got to get going. Right? We're getting moving. Um, I will say, but after saying that too, I will say that the first part of this book drags a little bit. Definitely drags when we, 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 Introducing some new characters at the beginning of this, and um, the parts in the beginning with the character Luo Ji, who is actually my favorite character, are pretty slow. I will say it, it is a little bit slow, but it gets going, and then it's like bam, 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 bam. It's so good once it kicks off. Um, pretty much everybody that I've recommended to it has liked it, except for one person. One of my good friends did not like Death's End, did not like Dark Forest. I mean, but you know. Who cares about her? She's insane. <laughs> Someone says so funds will strike David and Dan. If he doesn't get it right, for sure. They're gonna they're coming. Uh Death Mullet says, okay, cool. Mine is Death's end, but I agree. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Chug says, I think you're actually the main popularizer for three writer problem at this current time. Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe. I mean, my, I guess, I guess so. Like my, my, my first three writer problem video has like over 2 million views, I think. So it's pretty popular. I feel like I was definitely the main popularizer for Dune for a long time. Uh, now it's like insanely popular, but um, it's cool. <clears throat> someone says, I try not to get triggered when someone dislikes books. Yeah, exactly. Because not everybody's going to like everything. I'm the guy that got you to read, read Dune. Oh, awesome. I wonder if it's because a female reader is extremely sexist. I like the first book. I wonder because if it's to a female reader is extremely sexist. I don't think it was that. I think her reasonings for not liking it were, for one, that sin was really slow and that put her off a bit. And for two, she didn't like the hubris and the stupidity of humanity. She was like, oh, I don't, she like didn't understand that humanity kept making the same idiotic decisions over and over. And I <clears throat> basically had to like sit her down and she kind of got it after this. I was like, look, that's what we do in the real world. <laughs> that's just like how humans are. Like we repeat the same dumb mistakes. Like you can't really get mad at Shish and Lu for just like saying, for just pointing out how we really are. We, we, as a collective organism, the human collected organism is a little bit, is a little dumb, right? Individually, we're intelligent. Well, <laughs> not everybody, but like as, as a collective species, we make, it takes us a long time to learn. So, you know, <laughs> it takes us a long time to learn it as a collective species. What's the next three problem that will hit YouTube popularity, children of time? Um, maybe, I mean, my children of time video from, I don't know, like six or seven months ago, got way more views than I ever imagined. Like I, no one was talking about that book. Um, and I posted it and it's big, big hit on YouTube for me. Um, so much, well, actually before the video even really took off, the author, Adrian Tchaikovsky saw it. Um, so Adrian Tchaikovsky actually saw that video. He's, he watches my videos, or at least the videos um, that I have on his series, at least. Uh, so he's he's really cool. <clears throat> With Dune, you read it better than the cheaper um, ebooks. You had annotations as we all would. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Someone mentioned slowing down light in the vacuum, though. A race for absolute zero is actually a nice documentary to watch. Really? Is that an actual thing? Um, in 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 Destin, when Shishin Lu is talking about slowing down the speed of light within a vacuum, I, I just thought, oh, that's a weird concept that I've never heard of. I didn't know that was actually something that people are like, something that people are like attempting to do or attempting to learn about. That's interesting. But of course they are. Like science is always trying to learn everything. Jing Song Yang says, Quinn, check out Wandering Earth 2, the movie by Shishin Lu. I saw the trailer on that. Is that on Netflix? Um, I have not read Wandering Earth, the book, but I think. James has. I think James has. So, guys, I think that we have done everything. We've covered um, episodes five through ten. I've given my review. So, I think that we should wrap things up. I want to say thank you for everyone that joined on my first stream on this channel. It's been really, really awesome to have you guys here on the first freaking stream. Uh, thank you guys so much. I didn't know how many people were actually going to show up. I mean, watch this stream, considering it's the first stream on this particular channel. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed to this particular channel. Um, you can watch the Three Body Problem show. I thought it was linked in the description. James, can you link it, please? It's on YouTube. It's on the Tencent um, YouTube channel. I think there are about five or six episodes available for free right now. Um, I, free, I don't know how the free episode release schedule works. They release them kind of intermittently. I don't know. Um, but if you become a member on Tencent, then you can get them like every day, except for on Saturdays, I believe. You, they skip a day. I don't know. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for coming here. I love you all so much. It's been fun. 
reviewing the three body problem with you guys. We'll be back later on to review episodes 11 through however many I watch. Um, peace out, guys. Love you guys.